friends and welcome to today's video. My name is Benjamin and today we are talking about how to write a novel. Of course, writing a novel uh, can give one a sense of fulfillment just as I can testify from experience. I've written and published a number of novels Five of them are in printed form that are being used as reading texts in various schools in my country right now. I've also published a number of novels as ebooks on various platforms on Amazon.com, on Lulu.com, on Payheap.com. So I am familiar with the process of writing a novel. And that is what I want to share with you in, today, in today's video. Uh, if you have uh, been nursing the dream of writing your own novel, of course you are in the right place. And you also ought to know that uh, being able to write and publish a novel can actually come with a lot of advantages. And it can also become a source of earning passive income, uh, whether you are selling the novels offline, uh, like as in schools, or even online, on various online publishing and ebook selling platforms. Of course, that can become a source of uh, a passive income. So if you are interested in videos like this, please subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new video, you will be notified instantly. Let's go straight into the lecture and let's look at this page. to write a novel. Now let's make this page quite conspicuous. So let's uh, go, get to the highlights. The first step is what we call the brainstorming stage, the stage for developing your story ideas. Number two, we have outlining or the stage of creating your pre-writing notes. The third one is conducting research. The fourth is creating your characters. Number five, choosing the point of view. Six, designing the plot structure. Seven, using sensual details. Uh, eight, creating conflict. Nine, creating a satisfying end. And 10, editing your work. So let's look at this process step by step. Now brainstorming and developing your story ideas. This is the stage at which you come up with the ideas for your story. And you can use a number of techniques. What we call clustering is, you know, jotting down at random the various ideas that are involved. You know, at this point, you are just playing with different ideas to, that come naturally flowing into your mind. If you understand how the human mind works, you will discover that uh, there are a lot of uh, pieces of information stored in your subconscious mind, or what we can call your memory bank. And you can retrieve information from your memory bank, just as you can retrieve information from your computer. All you need to do is to engage your mind and focus on exactly the, the kind of novel you want to write. You can begin to generate ideas using the clustering method or the free writing method. You know, a cluster is a group of things. So you can use circles and you write different ideas that will give you a clue as to what exactly the, the, the novel should be about. 
And don't forget, you are really trying to extract ideas from your imagination. And the power of imagination comes to play at this stage. Free writing is a technique by which you just, you begin to write whatever comes to your mind concerning the idea you are trying to, to conceive. This is a, 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 a point at which you want to conceptualize the novel. You want to really uh, have a picture. You want to develop a, a concept, a picture of the kind of novel you want to write. What is the story about? And at this point too, you will be even thinking about what should be the ideal title for this novel. Then you have another technique known as talk writing. You know, when you are, uh, uh, you know, maybe you have a, a recording system and you just want to begin to talk about what the novel should be about. And of course, experience has shown that when you want to talk about something, ideas that you never knew existed keep flowing naturally into your mind. So that can be uh, a technique for really, uh, you know, developing your story ideas. Brainstorming is all about critical thinking, you know? And so at this stage, you, your, your target is to come up with a winning story idea. And of course, you need to give it a thought. I remember there is a, an Asian proverb, I'm not sure now whether it is Asia or somewhere else, but there's a proverb from a part of the world that says that, you know, good thinking is good product. You give something a thought, you, give, you focus on it, of course, you are likely to come up with uh, something good. So at this point, your aim is to choose an idea you are most passionate about. And if you give it enough or sufficient concentration, you are likely to come up with something. So that's the brainstorming or a stage, which is for developing your story ideas. The next stage is the outlining stage, at which point you create your pre-writing notes. Now, it might interest you to know that the writing process itself can be classified into three, what we call pre-writing, writing, and rewriting. Now, pre-writing includes all the preparatory activities that occur before you begin to actually write your story. Now, there are a number of techniques you can use here. We have a journalistic technique known as the five W's and H. Now, five W's and H, uh, you know, is about, you know, uh, what, when, where, what, I mean, uh, uh, why, and how, you know. So, uh, journalists use this to invent a, a story or to actually come up with their new story. What happened? When did it happen? Where did it happen? Who did what? Uh, you know, and why did it happen? And how did it happen? Of course, this can give you a clue as to how to really, really, you know, come up with the kind of story you want to write. What are you really talking about in this story? Uh, you know, who are involved in this story? So that is what you can come up with when you are using the five W's and H technique. Then the next technique is what we call the five elements of story, setting, characters, plot, conflict, and theme. You know, these are five basic elements of, of, uh, of, of story. And you can use this to form your pre-writing notes. The setting is about the place and time uh, within which the actions of this story uh, took place. Characters refers to who are uh, the people that actually participated in this story, you know, who carried out the activity actions or the events or who were involved in the incidents of this story. Then the plot is all about the arrangement of the events, you know, what comes first and what happens next. Then you have also the logical uh, 
you know, arrangement of events in a cause and effect manner. And that is what the plot is about. The conflict has to do with, you know, uh, the, 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 the problem confronting the major characters in this story, or what are the points of disagreement that will make this story really interesting? Because it is conflict that really generates suspense. When there is a conflict in a story, you will want to know what is going to happen next or how this case is going to be resolved. That makes the story interesting. And the other one is the theme, which is the main idea. Every good story should tell, uh, uh, should teach a lesson about life. And when people read a story, uh, uh, those who haven't read the story will naturally ask them, what is the story all about? And that is the theme. So here we, we look at different ways of generating or creating your pre-writing notes. It depends on the style you want to adopt. You know, a, a pan star doesn't need an outline. You know, the, the, you know, a pan star is somebody who simply begins an idea and starts writing as a process of discovery. You know, you just start writing. You don't know where the story is going or how it is going to end, you just keep writing. And that is in itself is a style of writing. Some people adopt that, you know? Some writers are the ones we call the hybrids. They use a combination of the two. Some will meticulously plan their story using the techniques I have discussed. Some will just dive into the story plunge into it like a, a swimmer that we just dive into the, the, the river and, and keep swimming and looking at where he's going to really come out. So there are different styles of writing. It depends on the one you choose. But then there are, this, uh, there are advantages of each style you adopt. And of course, there's nothing wrong in combining the various styles you can bring in an element of planning your story. You can also explore the possibility of diving into the, your story and looking at how it is going to play out. Now, all these are possibilities and you can adopt the style that works for you. Then the next thing is conducting research. You need to conduct thorough research to ensure that you use specific geographical and historical facts. Now, if you are writing a story, uh, it, it doesn't make sense to write a story uh, that is supposed to have taken place in the year 1990. And then uh, we begin to find events that happened in 2010 in that story. Uh, it doesn't really help credibility. And one thing that makes a story really interesting is that it, it ought to be, uh, it ought to have some element of authenticity. And this is why you have to conduct research. Now, setting is of two types. We have what we call the spatial setting and we have the temporal setting. Now, the spatial setting is about the geographical location. In that, you have to do a research as well. I mean, you won't be setting your novel in Nigeria and you are talking about what is happening in America. It doesn't make sense, you know. Uh, the writer of Oliver Twist couldn't have set it in Nigeria because all the things that happen in Oliver Twist are basically the, the things you find happening in London. So you ought to situate your story within the social cultural context and the characters have to agree with the setting as well and even the language the variety of language you use also uh, has to capture the, the the traits and the characteristics of the people you are talking about you need to conduct a thorough research both about the time, about the geographical location, about the characters, and the, the characters also have to be explored in terms of the, their demographics. You know, 
the gender, the age, and all this, you have to ensure that these things really add up. Because uh, it is true you are writing a fiction, yet your fiction has to have elements of, um, of facts in, in it so that people will be able to believe the story. If, if a story really is completely uh, unauthentic, uh, you see things that actually are not true there, you, you, it begins to lose credibility. And a novel ought to have credibility in, in certain respects. That's why conducting uh, research is really very, very important. Now, if you are maybe narrating an event that took place in a public institution that is known to everyone, of course, you need to research and ensure that what the, the description about that institution captures something that is uh, very close to verifiable facts. Now, having said that, let's get to the next stage. And this stage is about creating your characters. This is quite interesting uh, stage because don't forget that you need to create unforgettable characters. You need to make them believable. What we call characterization in, in novel writing and generally in literary palace uh, has to do with, you know, um, presenting, creating and presenting your characters in a manner that uh, makes these characters believable to the readers, you know? Uh, I, I wrote a novel called, um, that, that is titled, uh, the, the Mysterious Survivor. And I got a call from someone who was very, who sounded very emotional. And the person wanted to know, did this happen to you? Or did this happen to someone close to you? Uh, and all my efforts to explain that it, it's not really something that happened to me. You know, that guy, that guy was skeptical. And that shows that I succeeded in creating a story that someone thinks is actually true. And that is really the hallmark of a very powerful novel. When someone reads it, it should strike the person as something that really happens to someone. And if you create characters that your readers will love, your readers will, will, will get emotionally involved with, and that is why when you uh, uh, create characters, you have to be careful what happens to this character eventually. Because some of your readers or audience will even become emotional. There are characters they won't like uh, to, to find dead or something bad happening to them because they have seen some very good qualities in such characters. They have adopted such characters as their role models and you have to be careful how you kill them. Now, creating your characters is a very important stage in novel writing. And there are different kinds of characters. First, you have to come with your principal character who will become the hero or the heroine of the story. If you read my novel, uh, The Widow and the Wolves, of course, I have gotten a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of um, uh, reviews, some of them in, in the national dailies. And actually, you know, people got quite interested in some of these striking characters because they are characters that come alive in the page, on the pages of the novel. So creating, the, creating characters is, is a stage at which you carefully, you know, uh, inject elements of human behavior in your characters. It's like creating robots and animating them. In this case, you are creating real human beings that will come alive on the pages of your book. And this is a critical stage. Then, of course, you, you create some characters that will have some negative traits in them. And each character you create will become an object lesson. 
people will learn lessons from the experiences of the various characters. Now, you will be teaching lesson on uh, uh, choices made by the various characters and the consequences of the choices they have made. All these will come to play in creating your characters. Now, the next stage is choosing the point of view. You know, the, the point of view, which is also known as the narr narrative technique, you know, there are different points of view. In, 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 in grammar, we talk about the, the, the I mean, the, the, uh, uh, the pronouns, the personal pronouns, and you have three persons of the personal pronoun. You have the first person. The first person is the speaker, the person who is speaking. And the second person is the listener, the person you are talking to if you are the first person. Uh, the third person is the person being talked about. And all this represents the three point, possible points of view in, that, are, are, that can be uh, uh, used in a novel. So this point of choosing the point of view is the point at which you decide which of your characters you will use as perspective character, you know? either the first person or the third person or the second person. Let me give you an example with some of my novels. Uh, in The Widow and the Wolves, of, of, of course, I use uh, the third person point of view. But some specific characters became the perspective characters. You know, what do we mean by the perspective characters? You tell the story from the point of view of this particular character, what the character thinks, how the character sees things, how the character, you know, evaluates situations, the, the value judgment the character places on situations and on happenings and, of course, on the mannerisms of other characters. You choose a character that we, you will you will narrate your story from their angle or from their perspective. So, and uh, if you look at um, uh, one of my novels, of course, uh, The Mysterious Survivor uses the first person because this person is really the person that something happened to, the person who is really in the, in the middle of this, of this, uh, this experience. And he tells his story from his own perspective. And one thing powerful about the first person is that he is telling his own story, what happened to him. So there is a, a great deal of authenticity because someone is telling you what happened to him, what he passed through, and so on and so forth. So it's really a powerful tool. Then you also have uh, beyond the third person point of view, you have what we call the omniscient point of view. Of course, I use that a lot in some of my novels. The, the omniscient point of view is the narrative technique, uh, you know, that involves telling a story uh, from an omniscient point of view. The only person who is omniscient is God. And so when one is telling a story and he's telling you everything, including the, what a character sees in their dream, uh, what a character is thinking, and so on. And so that is, is using the omniscient point of view. And you need to choose your point of view uh, quite uh, wisely. And at this stage, you decide which characters uh, you will use as perspective characters and sometimes you combine a, a number of narrative techniques or points of view so that you will achieve uh, a whole lot of believability and also create suspense in your story. So let's uh, get to the next point. And this point is designing the plot structure. This is a critical stage because at this stage, you decide the plot structure of your novel, whether it is going to be a linear or episodic plot. A linear plot tells the story in a chronological order. You know, this kind of uh, plot is used a lot in 
the kind of story that presents a biography or an autobiography. You know, you begin to tell the story from the time this person was born and all that. I mean, I used element of that in my novel that is titled uh, The Triumph of Reason, of course, but it's a combination of the linear and episodic plot as well. So you begin chronologically or in media, uh, in media race. Of course, when we talk of in media race, we are talking of starting the story right in the middle of it. And then you use flashback to begin to recollect the things that happened in the past that have effect on the present happenings. And of course, all these are various techniques. Uh, you decide at the designing, at the point of designing your plot, how you approach the, the story and which type of plot structure you will want to have. Don't forget too that sometimes you have a simple plot and sometimes you have a complex plot where you have some plots embedded within the major plots. Now, all this depends on the kind of story you want to tell and the volume of the novel you are writing. Now let's get to the next point, and this is uh, the stage of using sensual uh, details. What we mean by sensual details, from the word sense or senses, you have sensual. Now you use sensual details to engage your readers, your readers' imagination. You want to show rather than tell. Let me give you an example. You witnessed, uh, you witnessed uh, a road accident and you want to tell what you saw. You know, instead of saying that some people died and all that, you, you, you come with some graphic details that those who were not there, we, we see what you saw. You are not just telling them what happening, you are showing them exactly what happening what, what exactly happening. It is like showing them a video clip with words, you know, and they want to see what happened, you know, uh, and you, you just want to tell about how the whole thing happened, you know, the, the, the tire all of a sudden, all of a sudden pulled out from the, the car and the car started some assaulting. And of course, uh, you know, you begin to tell of what happened where someone, or a head-on collision, and an explosion happened, you know, uh, and you saw a, 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 a beautiful lady with jerry coiled hair, and the, the hair, the head was severed from the, the body, and blood gushed out like, uh, like a river. And of course, when you are showing exactly what happened, you, you begin to really get your readers emotionally involved because you are not just telling a story, you are showing graphically what happened. So you are using words that appeal to the senses, the sense of vision, people can see it, the, the, the sense of sound, you know, you, you show exactly the things that people can hear and a, a, a whole lot of other things that appeal to their senses. So you use sensual details and the, at this stage, you, you begin to create the scenes, the various scenes of your story. And you create dialogue too, and you can infuse some sensual details even in your dialogue. So, uh, if you are telling, you will say someone is tall. If you are showing, you, you will say that he bent to pass through the door. You are not just telling this, you are describing a character, but instead of saying that this person is tall, you describe how he entered the room and you say he had to bend down to pass through the door. You are not telling your reader that this person is tall, but you have shown him how tall he is. You are describing a very fat woman, and you are not just saying the woman is fat, but when you, you say that when she entered, she filled the entire room. You, you use a hyperbole 
a, an element of ex exaggeration just to give the reader the picture of how fat, how fat this woman is. But we are not really saying it's fat. You are not telling, you are showing. So that is a very, very important way of telling a story. Then the next stage is creating conflict. Very important and powerful aspect of crafting your novel. You create conflict deliberately. The, your conflict is the engine of fiction. You make your hero's predicament appear hopeless. I mean, the person who read The Mysterious Survivor felt so emotionally involved in it. Because when you, when you look at the predicament of the character in The Mysterious Survivor, you feel for this particular person. And of course, you, you, at a point, you begin to, you are gripped with fear because you don't know what is going to become of this character, what is going to happen next. And then conflict creates suspense. And a story is as good as its suspense. If a story is not suspenseful, then of course it's not interesting. It becomes boring. It is the suspense that keeps the reader reading. And you can't put down the novel because you, are, you want to figure out what is going to happen next. You know, when there is a conflict, you want to know what is going to happen. And that is the engine of fiction. You need to deliberately create conflict in your novel to make it very, very interesting. The next is creating a satisfying end. Of course, a, a story has a beginning and then you get to the rising stage where it rises to a climax and then it begins to, to fall and you are getting to a point of resolution, you know? And so you have to have a, a satisfying end in, in literary cri uh, criticism or in literary uh, uh, appreciation, we call this denouement, otherwise known as resolution. You know, conflict has been created and in human life, where there is a conflict, what is being looked forward uh, to is the resolution. How is this conflict going to be resolved? You know, and you have to have a satisfying end and there is something that is called poetic justice. You have to do justice. A, a, a story becomes good when the, 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 the evil persons, the evil characters, you know, are brought to book and the good characters are rewarded. So you have a satisfying end. R write a fully satisfying ending. Let the readers become satisfied, you know, you, you don't want to write a kind of story that will make people abuse you. How could you have slaughtered a good character? How could you have uh, allowed a good character to be rewarded very badly? Of course, sometimes you have to do it, but there must be a reason to do it when your thematic preoccupation is to show how bad the world we live in is where the righteous suffer and the innocent is sometimes uh, even uh, uh, judged and condemned, you know. So it, it depends on the kind of story you want to tell and the kind of lesson you want to teach with your story. But let it be a satisfying end. Let it be logically concluded and that will make a good story. Then comes the the last stage, which is the editing your work. You have to correct the errors of grammar, spelling, and punctuation. You have to reconstruct sentences to express your ideas with greater clarity. From experience, I've discovered that really at the editing stage is where you even discover that sometimes you have to restructure the entire story. At the time you are editing your work, everything is possible. Sometimes you have to do a whole thematic uh, restructuring. Sometimes you have to also 
uh, tamper with the plot structure. Sometimes you readjust the conflict. Sometimes you also look at the characters and you do some readjustment. It's not just about the grammar, but also about the thematic of preoccupation. You get also uh, some areas that are gray areas you have to fine tune. You look at aspects of your setting and what and find out whether all the facts add up and see where you have to clarify certain things, where you have to fine tune certain things. And of course, the beauty and the splendor of your story will come out after the editing work. So it is a very interesting process. And uh, sometimes I would just write the novel uh, and just write and just write and just write. And without caring whether there are mistakes or not, it's very interesting because you don't want to interrupt your, 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 your line of thought, you know, your thought process. You want to ensure that you express your ideas in the very natural manner that they come, like a spring of water. You know, water flows naturally from its source, and that's how the ideas of a writer flow from the, from the brain, from the mind, uh, and then drop through the pain or, tr uh, or through the computer. And you, you don't interrupt the process. But after you have written everything and put down all that, uh, that are possible, or that is possible, then you sit down to edit and you begin to put things in their proper places. So at the editing stage, you fine tune everything and then your novel will come out. That's how it has been in today's, uh, uh, in today's uh, video. We have discussed how to write a novel and I want to believe that you gained certain things from this lecture uh, I encourage you to take the step, you know. The, the, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, but from experience I've discovered that taking that first step is the most tedious aspect of the journey. You just need to take the first step and other things will, uh, will naturally come into place. So I wish you a good, uh, uh, writing career, and I want to see you in the next uh, in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel because we upload new videos on this channel from time to time. Videos that will share ideas just as critical as what we have done in this one. Uh, click on the bell icon as well so that whenever I upload a new video you will be informed instantly. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments and if you have any commendations, if you have any suggestions, if you have any questions, please leave your comments below. Thank you once again. See you in the next video. And bye bye for now.